to two days in May 2011. This is Sunday, the final day, and everything is starting to happen here. We've got four winners already from C tiers. We've got some doubles winners, and this afternoon, we're gonna have numerous winners from the 2011 two days in May. Right now, Barry Schultz is in the lead. Got a couple guys, Matt Dollar, Brian Schweberger, Michael Joe pushing at his heels. Right now, we're gonna get over and let you hear from some of the guys you're gonna get to see play this afternoon. Here's the lead card from the final round of two days in May 2011 on the sunny side. Well, I'm here with Atlanta's own Matt Dollar. I believe I said you were out of the Augusta, Atlanta area, but you really play a lot in that particular region, don't you? I do. I play in Augusta pretty much every time there's a good tournament there. So. Well, now you, uh, you're you on a little mini uh, tour, two, three week tour. You said you may be going on over to the Hambrick. Uh, who all came up with you? Did you bring a little entourage? Yeah, we got a little group from Atlanta. Uh, me, Jason McCarovich, John Matlack, and Rachel Conley all made the trip up for uh, the third year. This is my fourth year personally, but they've all come. So you're the reason that uh, that you're dragging them up? That's right, that's right. I got uh, got lucky and got introduced to this by Keith Johnson, and so we keep bringing more Georgia people every year. Well, uh, the tell the be. people at home uh, why they want to be here. This is the Grange, AKA the Blockhouse Disc Golf and Country Club. Is it not just something special? It is, it's absolutely the most wonderful place you can play disc golf. I mean, the people here are awesome and they'll give you anything, anything you need, anything you want. And uh, the courses are great. It's just everything you could want in a disc golf course and country club. Well, now you've got a big day today. I mean, you know, you're uh, you're in a powerhouse group. You got Barry Schultz, uh, Michael Joe, two-time defending champ, Brian Schweberger all around you. But you held your own. You beat them down Thursday by yourself on the dark side. Not on the dark side, gonna be on the sunny side. What's aspirations for the afternoon? I mean, you're right there. Well, uh, you know, I wanna win. I really wanna win. I've uh, never won an A tier before, and I feel like I'm due. So uh, if I can just go out and play really good golf, I've shot a 48 all three times I played the sunny side this week. I'd like to drop that down to maybe like 44, 45. So, but it's getting windy, so we'll see. All right, looking for a mistake free round in his first eight tier, Matt Dollar. You'll get to see all his holes here from the sunny side. Well, I've got the two time defending champ and uh, you're gonna have to put the move on today if you want to pull the trifecta off. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> well, uh, how'd it go this morning? I mean, you shot a good round over there, but you weren't able to make up any ground on Barry. I missed a few pots here or there, but it was a lot of work that round. I was had a few really obscenely bizarre breaks just to save pars or craziness. So it was it was a lot of work just to even shoot two under. Well, we, we, you know, we had a great group yesterday with Karma. We got the same group, except we're gonna take Justin out. We're gonna bring Matt Dollar in. You guys know him. I mean, we're yeah. expecting the same kind of Karma this afternoon. I would think so. I would think it'd be a good fun group with the, what we have. Everyone should get along and be able to play off each other and enjoy the week. Now, how many, uh, how many years does this make that Michael Joe's been up here enjoying this piece of property, watching it evolve? Uh, this is my third. Third year? Yeah. And so you're a two-time defending yes. champ. And what did you finish the first year? I uh, won. You won the first year. So when did you not? Uh, oh, this, I, so you've, you've never not years. lost? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to see what happens this afternoon. Uh, what kind of round do you feel like you need to put together over on the sunny side? I mean, probably, you're going to need help? Probably going to need a little help and shoot something close to course record. What is the course record? 44. 44. Yeah. Well, Matt Dollar looking to try to bump his down to a 44-2. MJ looking to put on the trifecta. Never lost here. We'll see what happens this afternoon. Good luck, MJ. Thanks, Bill. Well, we are on the last day from two days in May. Too many days in May. Uh, I've got Barry Schultz, Brian Swearberger with me. For you especially, Swearberger, you've been here since Monday and you've been going at it hard. Uh, how much energy you got left for one more big pull over here on the sunny side? Well, after that nice uh, round I just pulled off on the dark side, it was my personal best. 48. And first oh, time nice. not having any fours in the round, which nice, is, really? yeah, nice. that's, that's tough to do out there on that course. It's so demanding. I had I was had some really nice thumber saves for the whole round, so. Well, how'd the putting go? Over. Putting was great. I. I poured water on every single one of my putts, <laughs> and I drilled every single one of them. It was beautiful. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Uh, he's made the move back. He's in the lead car. We're going to have Brian. We're going to have uh, Michael Johansson, Matt Dollar, and this guy that's in the lead by three right now, Barry Schultz. Uh, he shot a 48 this morning. Mm -hmm. Solid round. I mean, do those shots just fit your eye that good? Uh, they do fit my eye quite well. I really am, feel confident on every tee shot because it's the shot that I like to throw a straight shot. Um, I didn't quite play the deuce holes as well as I did yesterday. Didn't have as many deuces, but I didn't have any fours as well, just like Shrebby. So, nice. you know, it made up for it. 
Well, we're going to the sunny side. You got one round under your belt on <laughs> yeah, the sunny sure side. Do. I mean, you know, <laughs> do you have any holes that you're maybe going to shy away from or attack? Anything you learned yesterday uh, you're going to put into play today? Uh, no, not really. Uh, see the shot, throw the shot. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that when you're fresh on a course like I am on this one. I don't want to make it too complicated. See the shot, throw the shot, and make some putts. Well, we're going to bring some live action for you. We got Barry Schultz, Brian Schweberger, Michael Johansson, and Matt Dollar. This is the 2011 Two Days in May from Spotsylvania, Virginia. Huh. You can see it is going to be a tension filled round. These guys are knotted up. Matt Dollar, oh, he just really wants his first victory. But before we get to the action, let's get to the got to go course look. This is the sunny side from Spotsylvania, Virginia.
you can see the sunny side is a beautiful piece of property here in Spotsylvania, Virginia. Now, for what you've been waiting on, here's some live action from the final round of Two Days in May 2011. Well, hello and welcome to Spotsylvania, Virginia. This is Blockhouse Disc Golf and Country Club, and this would be your favorite place on earth if you ever had a chance to visit here. Sunday afternoon, two days in May 2011, and we're gonna be playing the sunny side. Now we've got something a little different if you've ever been here. We're gonna reverse the order of the sunny side. We're gonna go off on hole number 10, and we've gone off in staggered starts, and they've finished the final hole on the corral hole. So I look for them to change the numbers on this course over the next year or so. We got something special for you this afternoon. Barry Schultz sitting at 26 under par. Matt Dollar out of Atlanta, Georgia, sitting at 23 under par, looking for his first A-tier win. Michael Johansson looking to be a three-peat winner, sitting at 21 under par, and making a push this morning, shooting a big 48. Brian Schweberger making it back to this group on the final Final round here on the sunny side. This is going to be special. This is the final round from Sunday at the 2011 Two Days in May. Brian Swearberger on the tee. The wind's really picking up this afternoon. It is sweltering. It's about 85, but the humidity's up. And we've got 10 to 15 miles an hour today. This is hole number one. And that's tight. He gets right through. He is safe and he is over where you want to be. You've got to manipulate this first drive. Hit that gap. Do not go right. I do not go left. There's some OB at the bottom on the left. There's a swamp and OB on the right. So you just want to get it up there and then pitch it into a well-protected green. Now here's the two-time defending champ, Michael Johansson. Oh, that's tight. He drops down, he is safe, and he's gonna have an opportunity to get up and down for a birdie putt. This is a definite two shot hole. And now sitting at 23 under par in second place. Looking for his first A tier win, here's Matt Dollar. Oh, that's a good looking shot. The wind's pushing it hard though. Boy, we've got about a 30 mile an hour surge out here right now. and. <laughs> He just nipped the end of the trees. We've got one out in the open, one in good shape. Matt is in fine shape, but that wind is whipping out here. Barry Schultz sitting at 26 under par with a three stroke lead on the tee. And Barry's throwing a beautiful shot right down the heart. And he hits right on the edge of the bunker and stays out of the bunker. He's going to be well inside of 100 feet. And we are off. Well, Michael Joe in trouble. But he should be able to get up and down. That's got to get some legs. Oh, yeah. He has parked it. He's going to have himself a birdie, and that's how you start the round. Dollar now looking at a little sidearm playing the wind. Oh, yeah, that's the shot you want. A nice touch shot for Matt to start the round with a birdie putt. Well, Swebby waiting on a group to hole out there. You can see this is a beautiful bunker they've got in place here. He has just come up short. A good looking shot, he's easily on the green for a birdie putt. Now Barry with a pretty straightforward shot. Second shot here on the par four. First hole of the sunny side. Oh yeah, takes a little corner of that bush. Plops right on down. He was trying to give it a run. We'll move up to the green where we are staring a star frame right in the face. For the bird. You can see this is one well protected green. Oh, 
and Swebby just stabs it in there. As he's using the pour and water on his disc technique, says his hands clammy. And he grinded over that little 18 footer. Barry Schultz now. Matt Dollar and Michael Johansson, and we'll start the round with the star frame. That's the first hole, hole number 10 here on the sunny side. We're gonna move over to the fifth hole. This is number 14 on the original layout, 307 feet. And this is quite a deceptive hole. You can see that shoe line along the right side. Just wanna miss that. This is a downhill shot. He's hit the one tree that he did not wanna hit. He's gonna get a little squib around. He's gonna have himself a 40 footer feet. If he can bang that, he can still get a birdie. Michael Joe moving up now. It is one tough little flex shot because you have got to have something that you believe will come back at the end. Oh, if you got this shot, this helps. Michael Joe, he is hunting it. Oh, and he goes right in the basket, and there's an ace for Michael Johansson on the fourth hole. Solid shot for Michael Joe. How about that? Barry Schultz walks up and just says, wow, I don't know if I like to follow that. We can put a one down for Michael Joe and get him to 25 under. And that is a little excitement for you guys here on Sunday afternoon at two days in May. Barry Schultz now. A nerve-wracking drive. And she is not hooking up. And if Barry's not careful, he has blocked himself out for the birdie putt. He's going to have a big drop-in hyzer if he wants a chance. He's looking to give up two to Michael Joe. And now Swebert. Lining up yet another hook some. The more of these he gets to throw, the more twos I get to write down. Oh, the wind is really up out here, a good 15 to 20 miles an hour. And that's a good looking shot for Swebby. As you can see, the wind started shaving it around. It needs to lay down. He rolls past the basket. He goes down in the gully. He's still going. He's at least 35 to 40 feet. And there's an OB back there. He could be out of bounds. Well, Michael Johansson on the way to pick up his one as he gives the basket a little love and he snatches that sidearm out of the bucket. Well, Matt now, next to putt this, uh, we believe Swebby's OB long. This is for Matt's birdie, every bit of 40 feet downhill. Not a good bid, well right. Barry surveying the situation. Michael Johansson gonna move into a tie for second place. With that ace, he sits at 25 under along with Matt Dollar after Matt makes his par putt. And Barry is not going for the big hyzer dump. He is looking at a super tough shot. This is a soft Anheuser pitch from every bit of 45 to 50 feet. Oh, off the tree limb and almost in. Barry's gonna card a three. He's gonna remain at 28 under and have a three stroke lead now over Matt Dollar as well as Michael Joe. Beautiful thumber. Hit about 15 feet before the bucket. She stood up and she rolled right into the OB on the back side. This is a really big par putt. Oh, huge three right there from Brian. That'll keep him at 21 under par. Barry will move in to tap his par. First, we'll let Matt finish his out. Michael Joe with the excitement on this hole, a big ace here on the sunny side. Well, this is just one of those holes you dream about making if you've got some property. 
this little 240 footer oh beautiful little pond right there in front of it and matt dollar did he had take the water out of play but boy he's gonna bring it into play coming back with that putt as he has every bit of 35 to 40 long he's got some trees in front of him and that's not where you want to be barry schultz on the tee now it's 240 but it's probably only playing about 210 maybe 215 and that basket is 10 feet from the water's edge the wind is really up out here and it absolutely could slam one into the pond oh that's low that's trouble and barry schultz is in the pond and that is a mistake these guys were waiting for. Brian Swiberger making his way to the tee now. There's the standard two calls. Barry will be fortunate because Bear, oh, Swedberger, he's a little long, needs to bite. And that's going to give him a putt coming back down with the basket with water behind. For Bird, that is an inside the circle's edge putt. Michael Joe now. And that's a good looking shot from Michael Joe as he has parked it. Got it about 15 feet away. And Barry Schultz in luck as the Bear from Maryland is gonna try and retrieve his disc. Now, no drop zone on this whole Barry Schultz taking his meter. He's outside the circle, but I can tell you now, he don't wanna hop, cause he is not wanting to get wet. This for circle three. Just off the front edge, and that is a mistake by Barry Schultz. Jason Makarevich has a putt for birdie. He could get within one of the lead. Mikarovic, this to get within one of Barry. And that was a beautiful putt. He's looking for his first A tier win. He's worked past the nerves and he's playing some golf now. The big boy Brian Swiberger moving in. I can see from my vantage point he's going into his bag. He got himself a little bit of dirt on that hand. He's going to see if he can find a way in. Try not to get a stick in the bum. See if he can get him a birdie as well. Swebby looks like he's set now. Spent a lot of time on his knees yesterday. He says, I missed it before he even putts it. He just has no confidence there on that putt. Michael Joe moving in now. He's going to be within two of the lead after he taps this in. And a solid birdie there from Michael Joe. Swebby will move in to finish his and Barry will move down. And then we'll see if the bear can retrieve Barry's disc for him. We're coming in to what is generally the closing hole here on the sunny side. This is number 18. Oh, what a beautiful hole, 250 feet. And it is just sweet. 
Matt Dollar on the tee, one stroke out, throwing a sidearm. He's staying clean. He comes down and sits. He's going to be just at the circle's edge. He'll have himself a putt. He's a little below the basket, but nothing wrong with that shot. She might only be 250, but boy, you really have to control your flight down through here. Michael Johansson now ready. Michael Joe two back of the lead. That's early. Oh, what a good kick and a splash, and he is right in the creek. I'm pretty sure this is casual water. I can see where it's roped off about 40 feet left of where his disc landed, but right there next to the bridge should be casual. Barry Schultz now, and knowing this shot fits Barry's eye, looking for a good move here. That's a little low, that needs to get hot. Oh, he explodes off a tree right in the center. He was gonna need it to get lucky anyway to get a birdie putt. And Matt with a chance to tie Barry Schultz through the first nine holes, get rid of those three strokes. He started at the deficit. That boy wants his first A-tier win, but he's gonna have to take out one of the most elite players on the planet if he wants it. Brian Swiberger up now. Looks like Brown's gonna take the standard flip up hyzer shot. Oh, he explodes off the same tree Barry did. He goes left, he is in much more danger than Barry. Let's get on down and just see how they handle it. Well, Swedberger stymied. Got a small little row of trees all over him. He's only about 120 feet, just wanting to get up and down, take his three. And a good shot from Brian, so he's gonna leave it about 15 right. Should not be a problem. Now Barry Schultz now. Just looking to get up and down. He may try to give it a run. Oh, he's giving it a run. Get it. And just misses. Oh, and a bad roll away. And Barry's going to have a tough little putt between two trees for his par. No well, Michael Joe now taking his relief backwards from the creek. This is a big birdie putt. Get it. Oh, a little splash out on the left side. A good bid from Michael Joe. Now here's Matt Dollar for a share of the lead. Matt going through his routine. Is a birdie for Matt. He'll move to 29 under par and tie Barry Schultz. Barry moving in round now for his par putt. Not a problem as he puts it right between the trees. He'll have a share of the lead with Matt Dalla at 29 under par. Michael Johansson's gonna be 27 under par and Swedberger, if he can drop this in, will be at 22 under. Well, the action's heating up. It's still anybody's ball game. Let's get over now for your PDGA rule of the day.
This is your PDGA rule of the day, 803.06, optional rethrow. Now what's just happened, unfortunately car horn has gone off in my back swing. I'm in a bad area, I've got a couple options. I can go over here and we'll go look at it and see exactly what my options are. But this is a hole I wanted to get a birdie on and now let's go see exactly what's happened. Well, you can see, I mean, I've got a tough fly. This is a fresh cut in course. I'm at New Idlewild in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you come to 2012 World, you get to see that. This has a fresh new limb. I really can't even pitch back over. I'm only five feet in front of the fairway. I can't even pitch back to the fairway. If I do, I've only got about five feet to land. I can't throw another thumber. I mean, I can take a chance and you can see my, my best option would be to try to throw a thumber, which is hard. I got this in my backswing. Everywhere I'm looking, I got trees. Now I'm in a worse spot, okay? So that is one of my options. I'm two laying there. It's gonna be three, maybe four before I get back to the fairway. Then I gotta pitch up and putt in. I'm staring a five or a six right now. Let me show you something that you can do if you're in this situation. Well, if you find yourself in this position, maybe a bad shot, doesn't have to be interrupted by a car horn or even another person. If you're down in that area and you already know that you're staring a five in the face, maybe even a six, you've got some options. You can declare an optional rethrow, rule number 803.06, at any time. You can come right back to this tee pad from that shot right there. If it was your putt, if you just putted and it rolled through and went down and went 90 feet away into an area you couldn't see the basket anymore you have the option to re-putt with a one penalty throw so I'm gonna go back to the tee I'm now gonna be throwing three but I'm not still over in the deep in the woods throwing three with nothing to do so let's see what happens with this option Well, that's the shot I was looking for originally. Let's go up and see if I can get up and down for a four. I feel like my best option was gonna be a five or a six if I continued chopping it down the fairway over there. Well, you can see right there, I was able to get up and down for my four, taking a penalty throw. If I would have went over in the woods, I'm definitely looking at a five, maybe a six. Knowing the rules saved me one, maybe two strokes on this hole. It's the first round, it's early. I'm still in a good frame of mind, hasn't tanked me on my round. Maybe I can get myself back into contention if I can get my game together. The PDGA rule of the day, 803.06, optional rethrow. Know the rules, they can save you a stroke during your competitive play. Well, there's your PDGA rule of the day. Now, the back nine, the final nine holes of two days in May. Here's the action for you, live from Spotsylvania, Virginia. Well, we're over on hole number two, the 11th hole of this match. This is just quite simply a beast, 324 feet. You can see the pinch off factor right off of the tee and it just continues all the way to the green. This is one of the more dangerous holes on this side. Matt Dollar now with the share of the lead, just looking to penetrate that first gap and get anywhere up there near the green. little tight and Matt explodes and he has gone to a spot where he is going to have an opportunity to get up and down but he is absolutely going to be getting jiggy with it if he wants to get up and down. Now Michael Joe, I'm telling you this is one of those butt puckering holes. You have got to throw this thing with just about everything you got and you just do not want to move a foot left or right. It's a little high, but that is a pure line. 
Michael Joe is sneaking up in and he is on the edge of the green there. He's gonna have a sticky little putt, but he's about circle's edge, maybe a little bit out. Barry now with an opportunity to separate himself from Matt Dollar. Michael Joe there, he's only two back. He is continuing to apply the pressure as well. Oh, and that is a pure shot. That is money, guys, as he just pures it up on the green about 18 long. Silence is golden. Now the big boy, Brian Swearbugger, he got this hole both times with a birdie two in the round on Tuesday afternoon in the sunny side C tier. So he's got a lot of confidence coming into here. And he actually did that with a rock. Good looking shot from Brian. He has got the perfect line and he is going up. Booyah, he almost hits the basket as he just skips by and that's gonna be three for three on one of the toughest holes on the property. Well, Matt, surveying the situation, Barry's about 16 feet from the basket. Pretty easy birdie putt. Brian Swerberger's about 10 feet past it. Michael Joe also with a good birdie putt. And then there's Matt Dollar with a touchdown down. And what a great shot as he's thrown it up there and parked it. He'll have the easy par, only lose one stroke to Barry. Now Michael Joe for Bird, I went over and looked at this and this is not that tough a putt. He can free himself from the shul and he's got a clean look at the basket. This to get within one of the lead right now. Beautiful shot right there from MJ. He'll get to 29 under. He is one behind Matt Dollar and Barry Schultz can tap this little 16 footer in. He'll take that one stroke lead back over Matt Dollar. Barry peers it right in. He'll get to 31 under par. And the big boy, Brian Swearberger, going to birdie this hole three times this week with a perfect drive, almost hit the pole. And that's a mid-range rock he's using, guys. Well, we are going to move over to hole four on the front side. It'll be the 13th hole of this match. <coughs> Right now, Barry Schultz, Matt Dollar with a two throw lead over Michael Johansson, an eight throw lead over Brian Swerberger. And this is one of those holes you absolutely have to have. This is number four, it is 192. And Matt Dollar's ready. Matt throws it into a tree and drops down and I can see his disc and he has nothing. Joe, he's only too bad. Good looking shot right here. Oh, he hits the root and scoots it on up. Beautiful release as he is parked, maybe 10, 12 feet left. Barry looking to do the same. Matt in trouble. He's wanting to get that lead back right now. Oh, Barry has given it some air there. And that is a part job as he has based it. I mean, if you're keeping score at home, you can go ahead and write the two down for Barry as well. Barry will move to 32 under. Matt Dollar with no chance, I'm gonna tell you now, from his where he lies. Michael Joe looking to get within one of Matt and two of Barry. And here's the big boy, BKS, with a hook thumb for us. Oh, he gets it up and no ace for you. Just a simple birdie. One of the must get holes here on the sunny side. Number four, little 192. Now Matt in trouble. We'll see if he's got another rabbit in his hat because that's what it's going to take to get this one in the basket. I went over 
and looked at that shot and he has nothing. Probably one of his favorite shots. He probably empties his bag, throwing thumbers, ace running. He's really disappointed with this effort. Good bid up, and he is safely under the bucket for his easy three. Swearberger having a little fun, says he is not giving Barry any more his putters. That is Swebby number three that Barry just pured that with. Swebby says that's it. It's over. He is not receiving any more from him. He's tired of seeing his own disc take him down. Michael Joe gets to 30 under. Barry Schultz 32. Matt Dollar will remain at 31 under par. We got five holes to go. It's still anybody's game. Well, we are coming down to the end of just a beautiful, beautiful week. Too many days in May. They started last Sunday with the AMs. They had C tiers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They had doubles on Friday, and then the Mac Daddy. We had two days in May for the open players here on the sunny side and the dark side. Two holes to go, Barry Schultz with a three stroke lead. This is hole number eight, 272 feet, and it is quite dangerous. You've just gotta manipulate little Anheuser Alley and get it on down. You should get yourself a putt. And Barry is clean, he is clean, he is clean. And he could have possibly went in the creek OB up there just long. There is OB just past the bucket. From my angle, it looks like he has brought that into play. Now Michael Johansson, Michael Joe three back with two to go. And if Barry gone in the creek there, he's got a chance to get one back if he can get a birdie because he has virtually parked for the par putt. And Michael Joe will have oh, one what? sticky putt. He's going to be on his knees. He's going to lean out to the side as he's inside of 15 feet. But he is under the bush that is considered a bunker on this hole. And that'll be one tough birdie. But you can see Michael Joe, he's going to fight to the very end. Now the big boy BKS, there's that cough, nervous cough. He's got it rolling. He's looking to finish this event with a beautiful shot down here and try to get a couple more birdies. Oh, he don't like it. He's asking for it to flex and it's right down in the creek, but I believe he may be in the casual water creek. I can't tell from here. And Matt Dollar frustrated knowing he's let an opportunity slip away. Matt giving it some air. He needs an ace here and oh, he just gets caught. He was going to be parked right on the green. And no love for the man from Atlanta. He's not gonna win this one because Barry Schultz is gonna close the door. We'll get on down to the green of hole number eight and see exactly what they've got. Well, a little life left as Barry is OB up here. And he doesn't have a gimme. He could possibly take a four. Matt here looking for a huge two. Not willing to surrender just yet. Good looking putt. Oh, just off the side, and Matt is going to roll OB as well. Quarter inch from a birdie. Instead, he's going to be putting for a bogey, and Matt's weekend is over. Brent Swiberger moving in now. Brian is probably at the circle's edge. He is straddling the creek. He's got a clean official lie. Let's see if he can just bang this putt for one more birdie. Pure. Brian Swedberger getting a 25 under. He knows he can't catch these boys, but he's a warrior. He's been fighting all day as well. Well, determining where Barry went out of bounds, he's gonna take his meter. He's got about 18 to 20 feet. This is for a 3P. Yeah. 
not a problem. Unfortunate roll there into the water, but he still cards a par. Now Michael Johansson gonna crawl in up under the bush on the left side there. He's gonna go to a knee and this is for Bird. Yeah, Michael Joe's gonna go to two knees and just do a dwarf mini me putt. Not a problem as he cars the birdie. He gets the 32 under. He is two behind Barry. Now young Matt Dollar with a great bid from about 65 to 70. About a quarter inch short rolled right OB. So he's in on two, out on three, and that will be his four. And he's going to go back to 30. He's going to end up in third place as Michael Joe's made to push. We've got one hole to go here from the sunny side. Let's get over and show you the corral hole. We're at hole one. Uh, lucky enough to have my buddy Barry Schultz with us. Good morning, Barry. Good morning, Billy. How you doing? Nicely done. Well, we're here at hole number eight. Good looking beer. Oh, that's Ooh. All right, we're over. One of Billy's favorite holes. I thought that thing was going to hop in, big bro. Man, it felt good on the hand. Halfway there, I was like, oh, that could go in and jump in, baby. Stan McDaniel on the tee first. And I told him how much I liked this hole. And he looked at it and just smiled and said, another beautiful shot. And that looks good, Barry. All right, we're on hole 15. Another beautiful shot. Yeah. Oh, that's money. Oh, elevator going down in the bucket. This is the closing hole. This is a magnificent hole. The clash on the dark side. This is going to be fun. Their team gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we sure hope you've enjoyed the coverage from two days in May 2011. Barry Schultz is going to win this event. He's got a two-stroke lead over Michael Johansson with one hole to go, a four-stroke lead over Matt Dollar. And this is one of the most infamous holes on the property. This is 272 feet, simply known as the corral hole. Michael Johansson coming off a big birdie will have the box. And if Barry Schultz can just get it in the corral, he will be victorious. Michael Joe never lost this event. He's a two-time winner, looking to be a three-time winner. And he has put the push on, but just couldn't quite make it happen. He threw an ace for us today. If he could get another one, it would be something special. Michael's got it up there about 18, maybe 20 feet just outside the corral. Not a tough birdie putt. He has certainly put the pressure on Barry to throw the shot he needs to. But he'll have to wait as the big boy, Brian Schweberger, after carding a two on the last hole, he's got the box. He's sitting at 25 under and he's looking to finish with a bang. Oh, swebby has got a good move on it. That's gonna come in a little short. He just needs to sit. He just gets outside the corral. He's gonna have a tough putt. If he's got a turbo, that may be the one he chooses. And now here's the man of the week, Barry Schultz, first time playing the sunny side yesterday. And he seems to be manipulating it well as he's held on to his lead. Young Matt Dollar caught him three times, but never really could pass him. And Barry has just pured this one right up under and on the green, and that will secure his victory. If you're keeping score at home, you can go ahead and write a two on the card for Barry because he's not going to miss that one. Now here's young Matt Dollar going to try to give us some action as he has had a great weekend looking for his first A tier win. Just came up a little short and that does roll around to where he's got an open look. Won't have the corral. We'll let him come down to us now. This is the last hole from two days in May 2011. Yeah, poor Matt Dollar. He is absolutely heartbroken. He was looking for his first big A tier win. And in order to do it, he only had to pimp out Mr. Barry Schultz, Mr. Michael Johansson. This is a big putt here for Birdie. Not a problem, as he played great all weekend long. 
Going to finish third today, but what a disappointment as he caught Barry three times and he felt like he had the moves to win this event. Now Michael Johansson moving in. We're looking at a star frame here possibly on the last hole to finish the round. And you can see, oh, he goes through the corral hole, having a little fun there. MJ gets to 33s. And what a sweet shot. And now the big boy, Brian Swearberger, on the far right side of the corral. This to secure a star frame as Barry is parked. And Brian tosses his right in. And before the gallery, the lead card is going to secure a star frame as the man moves in now for his final putt for the victory. Barry Schultz, winner of the 2011 Two Days in May. <laughs> what an event here in Spotsylvania, Virginia. Now it's time for your I'm on Cloud9 post-round interviews. Well, this is the I'm on Cloud9 moment post-round interview, and uh, I mean, you're feeling pretty bad right now, but you are on Cloud9, Matt. I mean, what a performance. Uh, I know you had expectations when you came in here, but you see Barry Schultz get on that list. You know Michael Joe's here. You know Brian Swearberger. And there's a lot of other players that didn't quite perform that are here. You caught Barry three times in that round. Uh, what was going on? Were you were you feeling like you had him? I mean, did you still have energy left? To... Absolutely. I felt like I was in it every moment. I felt like I uh, I was just one putt away, one drive away. And uh, every time I tied it up, I really felt like uh, this might be the time that I pulled ahead. Um, and then that last shot, well, not the last shot. Well, the putt on hole eight, I mean, that was maybe a quarter inch low. Uh, yeah. And for that to get up and roll into water, at that point in your heart, you know it's over and, and you've still got a hole to play. And that's the toughest thing to deal with. But you Indeed. kept your head up. Yep. You came out, you birdied the last hole. And, uh, you know, you were in a fight the whole way and you gave Barry Schultz all he can handle. Yeah. I, uh, Barry came up to me right before the last hole and he told me that, uh, you know, that I'd played good and, you know, bad luck, keep my head up and get this last birdie. So that inspired me to get the birdie. You know, I didn't want to ruin the star frame. Everybody, you know, birdie in the last hole, so. Well, that's Matt Dollar. He was looking for his first A-tier win. It's going to happen soon because he pushed the best players in the world right to the edge. Well, I'm here with half of the lead card, Brian Swearberger, Michael Joe. Michael Joe, we'll start with you. Man, what a round. Was that 45 again? Yeah, it was 45. Uh, I don't know if we got actually captured it on camera. I'm sure you heard it, but a great ace. I mean, and you really seemed to, to take off from there and start pushing. You caught up to these guys uh, right where you needed to and just couldn't seem to catch a break there on the front side, which was our backside today. Yeah, no, I played well, very well. I was very happy with how I played overall. I got a bad bounce or two at the beginning, but not bad. I was very happy. I got the ace definitely. Got me going a little bit, probably a little too much on the next shot, but that's okay. Well, now you were looking for something that uh, is big. I mean, you were trying to three-peat at an A-tier. Have you ever done anything that big No, yet? this is the only A-tier I've ever won back-to-back. -back. So, well, a great weekend. You're going to finish second yeah. behind Barry Schultz. And Swebby, I'll tell you, man, that was a battle out there. I mean, you were in it, you were out of it, you were up and down. It seemed like clammy hand was not an issue today. No, no, not, not at all. There was a lot more dry dirt out there, so I didn't have to <laughs> rely on the water on this course, the other course, the ground was all wet. So I, I, I just night. poured water on my hand for the whole that whole round, and this round I just dirted it. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I enjoyed watching that battle. I knew I didn't, didn't have a realistic chance of catching because I was like seven strokes out of the lead, but uh, I really enjoyed watching them battle because it got tight for the last nine holes. Well, anything could have happened, and uh, I tell you, you and Matt, I certainly enjoyed this round. I had two. Hook mm -hmm. summer buddies in this round. And Michael Joe, I was looking for you to throw one for me, but he threw one. Well, out of the deep shul, I mean off of the tee. Oh, you're not seeing me throw one off the tee. Now, uh, you know, do you look forward to coming to a place like this where you really get to, you know, show everybody that talent? Because that is an earned talent. Uh... I mean, I'm, I'm, I might be known for my thumber, but I would much, I'd rather throw backhands. I, I just enjoy throwing the backhands. It's, it's, uh, it's more of a challenge. It, thumbers are really easy for me, and I know they're easy for you and a couple other people, but I just like throwing the backhands. It's, it's more fun to me. Well, we're at the end of May. I'll ask both of you guys. We're getting into the heat of the season, into the summer. What's next for Big Brown Swedberger? Where are you headed? Oof, this was my 20th tournament of the year. 
I played a lot this year. Me and Terry Gallops, we're just going back and forth on who's played more. But uh, I got a full schedule. I might be playing a local event at farm, the Farm Life Open down in uh, Greenville, Williamston, Williamston, North Carolina. They had a little private course, really tight and technical. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to play. I might take the weekend off because this was a long week of golf. I'm going home right after this. All right, well, Michael Joe, what's up next for you, bro? Oh, uh, might play a local Ironman in town, but after that. <laughs> That's a brutal event in itself. No one said I was smart. Yeah. It's okay. And I'll play some others during the year, but it'll mostly be local for the next month or so, probably. Uh, that's Brian Swearberger and your two-time defending champ, Michael Johansson, from Two Days in May 2011. Great weekend, guys. Thanks, Thanks Billy. Well, I am here with a man that is fortunate this week to win this event, Barry. I mean, you got pushed right to the oh, end, not just with Michael mm -hmm. Joe, but that Matt Dollar was coming, too. How'd you handle him catching you halfway through, knowing you still had nine holes you really weren't comfortable with? Uh, first, I had to deal with that ace. Big yeah, shot. It was a little hot coming into that green with the OB behind, you know, and uh, not that I was necessarily thinking he was going out, out of bounds or anything, but just slammed that basket and stayed in, and I didn't get the deuce there, so that was a two-stroke swing. I didn't know where he was sitting as far as where stroke I play. I think that pulled him within two of you right there. But, you know, I just, that rifled up the tension a little bit in the group as far as trying to make sure you played well. Uh, we made the turn over here uh, and, and checked out the scorecards and saw that we were tied, so I knew the game was on. You know, like he had said, I thought they might have had a little bit of an advantage, you know, playing the 10 or 20 or 50 rounds they have out here on me, uh, especially just where you can't be. There's holes out here that you just can't be right and short or left and long, whatever the case is, uh, and they know that, and I don't just because I haven't played the rounds, but uh, made some good putts, made some good throws. You know, we got the kicks and the wax out there on this course. You know, some good, some bad, but uh, stayed positive all day. So. Well, hole six, you came in and you were really stymied on the tree mm. down there. Mm. And Matt had made a good shot. MJ at that point still was just trying to fight. That's where he made that huge putt to keep himself yep. alive. But I think that might have been the biggest shot of the week for you. You seemed to grind a little bit and you went back and forth in discs. What was going on there? Uh, hole six, Billy, you have to remind me which That's one That's the one that with is. the tree across the front there. You were stymied. It's a serpentine hole. Oh, the two-shotter mm -hmm. that they moved the basket on today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a little unsure uh, because that was such a tricky hole uh, where the basket was and everything. Uh, I was happy with my drive. Got a little snooker behind that tree over there and, and stuff, but uh, tricky little shot like you have on a lot. If you're not in the fairway on this course, you have a lot of standstill, hit a gap or two gaps 10, 20 feet in front of you, and hopefully whatever happens, happens. And, um, I executed that shot that time and made the putt up there. Well, I feel like that closed the door. And I'm gonna turn the page just a little. You're a tour player, Barry. Mm -hmm. You've been to Europe, you've been to Japan. I have not been to Europe, Billy. You've been to Japan. I'd like to. Anybody wants to take me over to Europe, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you have traveled the country, you've traveled the world. What do you think of this place? I mean, as a disc golf heaven, you've got a disc golf heaven, Sandy Point up in Wisconsin, sure your former sure. home. Yep. What do you think of this place and where does it stack up in your travels? The average Joe, whether he's good, bad or ugly on a disc golf course, he is going to love this place. He is going to come here and get his fill from the moment he steps on the property to the moment he gets off. It's a camper's paradise. If you like to camp for two, three, ten days and disc golf while you're doing it, you're going to absolutely love this place. This is grassroots disc golf at its best. They try different things with course design and, and printing up their course and stuff like that. So, you know, they try some weird stuff. It's got some really good home East Coast feel to it. Um, it's really rare. This is really rare to have. Um, I understand that it's so good and it's so popular in this area of the country that many places have, many people have come here and then gone home and trying to duplicate this. You know, and you can't really duplicate this. It's such a unique situation. And there's 20 or 30 people working their butts off every year out here improving this place. So it's gonna be hard to duplicate it. But uh, this is maybe not my favorite place on earth, but it's in top five. So excellent, I can't wait to come back. Well, that's Barry Schultz, winner of the 2011 Two Days in May, his first time at the property. He'll be back. Well, that has been Two days in May 2011. If you don't know anything about the Blockhouse Disc Golf and Country Club, AKA The Grange, you need to bring your fanny on over here. I don't call it my favorite place on the planet for nothing. This is quite simply what we all aspire when we want to build a piece of property. I'm Billy Crump for the Clash DVD team. That'll be it for us this year. Look for us possibly covering the AM Worlds. And if you like what you see, don't be scared. Go over to ClashDVD.com and buy a DVD. Give us a little support.
week. Oh, yeah.